The biggest mistake I see engineering students make in design projects is to go way too deep on detailed calculations and simulations way too early before establishing that the basics of your design are actually a good idea. So I just spent a week reading like 30 papers of student design projects and it's so frustrating to see papers where obviously a lot of work has been put in, like good, serious, hard work, but it's just the wrong work. And what that often looks like is finite element analysis. For instance, this project, it's on a safety shoe. And the idea behind this project was to not have a single solid cap of steel in a safety shoe, but to have sort of a rib cage um, of different articulating parts so that the shoe can move more naturally, which is, it's a nice idea. It's a nice project. And finite element analysis might be a good idea at some point, but before you do that, I'm much more curious, like, why four ribs? Wouldn't three be enough? Why aren't there six? Um, the specific shapes of them. And um, this paper doesn't show, for instance, the foot in the shoe actually moving. And that's the main claim. The main claim here was that this rib cage would lead to more natural movement of the foot during walking. And instead of showing that, there's lots and lots of calculations. So it's not that these students were lazy, like there was a lot of hard work done during this project and there's a lot of work in the paper. And it's also not a mistake in the sense that these simulations are wrong. They're just a little bit besides the point. It's not that these students didn't work hard enough. It's just that, in my view, they worked sort of on the wrong thing. Here's a different example. Again, finite element analysis, also super detailed data on a specific alloy of metal that's being used. This is, by the way, a pin for fixing bones. So a pin you don't need to fix with screws, but that has these sorts of things that come out to keep it in place, which again, nice idea. But I believe that a pin can be strong enough to do that. I don't need a finite element analysis to tell me that. What I'm much more curious about, as you can see like what I wrote here, like where is this in, in the bone? How does it work? And also these things that come out, so they need to be optimized for keeping the thing in place within the bone. Um, so my question is, okay, what shape do they need to be? What do they need to do exactly? How does that fix in the bone? And you could do that much more qualitatively than with these very detailed analysis. So my point is not to say, don't do finite element analysis or don't do CAD models or detailed descriptions of the alloys that you're gonna use or other detailed engineering design work. Because of course, you're doing an engineering design project you need to dive into the details at some point. You will need to show at some point that it's going to carry the loads that it will be subjected to. But before you start doing the really detailed calculations and simulations, before you fire up your CAD software and start doing finite element analysis, think what are the major questions in this design and what are its major properties? Like if it has three of something or four of something, why are there three or four? Uh, shouldn't there be two or five? And if it has like the bone pin, if it has sort of things that stick out, if that's the new thing about your design, then probably spend some time on designing those, considering alternatives and establishing in your final report that the basic structure, the architecture of your design, that that's a good idea. And once you've established that, then it's interesting to dive into the simulation, the force calculations, the strength calculations, what alloy it is, then it helps to pin things down really specifically. In other words, before you get to the hardcore engineering, don't forget to design the thing. And that's immediately the reason why this is probably something we see a lot, because it's difficult, especially when you're an engineering student and you've learned to calculate things, you've learned to do finite element analysis, you've learned your strength of materials and your statics and your dynamics, and you want to show the calculations. But remember, First, you have to decide what to calculate. So go back to your design goal. Go back to what is unique about your new design. What is novel? What is interesting about it? And try to establish that that's a good idea on a bit more qualitative level first, and then pick one or two of the most important elements. And there you can put in your efforts to do the simulations, to do the calculations, to really dive into the detail, to show that that unique, novel, important element of your design that that would really, really work as you're predicting it would work. Because you gotta remember also, like when we're reading these stacks of reports, of course, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a reason to be interested in your calculations. If I just see loads and loads of calculations and a page full of formulas, 
I need a reason to spend the time to really dig into that and understand it and judge it. And if I don't know why you're doing a complex calculation, I'll tell you a secret, I probably won't even read it properly. So yeah, that was my number one mistake engineering students make in design projects. Perhaps not the biggest or most important mistake, but it is the one that I find frustrating because it's so obvious that students work hard at these things, but the paper or the end report leaves me with a lot of questions and it doesn't convince despite all that work, despite all that ingenuity. So I hope that was useful instead of me just ranting into the void. If so, like and subscribe. Uh, I might do this more often. Bye.